So basically, the Taliban banned women from being in universities and colleges. At the moment, what they have had basically before coming up for a while is that we are trying to make the institutions more Sharia compliant, not that we're trying to take away their education. And because of that, they basically stopped all women from attending university and college until further notice. Not a permanent ban. They basically just said, just until further notice, they're trying to make it more Sharia compliant. Now, the West is obviously going to use this as just propaganda, and they're basically nailing it in. And you see people like Piers Morgan asking Andrew Tate about it and talking about how, what are your thoughts on that? Is it fair? Is it just? You see Western media using big labels like Taliban bans women's basic rights, and they love this. They love this type of stuff. They'll eat it up. One thing, one thing I've learned to never trust is these big media outlets titles ever ever and i'll give one example one example because this is something i came across recently and i think it'll really um help you know solidify the message the guardian reported 6500 people 6500 migrant workers were offed due to qatar announcing the world cup or since qatar announced they're going to be hosting the world cup they said something like that you can go look it up right now what that seems like is Qatar having migrant workers build the stadium caused the death of, I mean, the offing of 6,500 migrant workers. <laughs> what does that number actually show? What does that number actually show? That, and they say in the article, the number 6,500 is the number of migrant workers who left this earth, no matter how they left, no matter what they were doing, within the country in the last 12 years since it was decided, that's where the World Cup's going to be hosted. And you see people on TikTok saying, oh, 6,500 people, whatever. That was a lie. That's literally a misleading title. So I'm not going to ever believe what people are saying. But on this note, it's very important. Now, again, we look at the root. If, if they are ruling, or even in their own estimation, based on the Sharia, right? and I don't know much about them, but if they are, they don't go based off of liberalism and democracy. So to expect them to act like the West is, is fallacious. It's purely ethnocentrism. It's, it's, it's just an, ideal, uh, an ideological difference. You might think that's wrong, whatever, prove it. That's what I'm asking you to do. Prove that your ideology is right, their ideology is wrong at the root level. Otherwise, you can complain about X, Y, Z. Them, if their intention is to only have the brothers go to school until they can build sister-only schools and then segregate, I think that's beautiful. Go for it. May Allah bless them. Make it easy for them. If the goal is to completely ruin and not have women learn Islam at all, or, or learn educate uh, educate themselves on anything, that's completely un-Islamic. That's completely wrong, and that's not mm -hmm. something as far as I know Islam would allow for. I know people 100%. are different things, have different opinions, but uh, as far as I know, that's not something that Islam actually allows. I had this conversation earlier, and even me and Anhu were talking about it. That why didn't they ban men from school? Why didn't they ban men from going there? Well, what as is as muslims following and practicing islam we believe that men are responsible to be providers and protectors over women so why would it not make sense that they continue to basically strive to be the next generations of breadwinners the most until in the meantime that we can get our act together with the sharia compliance and with the rules and regulations and code of conduct that we have firmly rooted in islam to the best of our abilities does that not make sense bro yeah yeah and i mean sorry on hell you should go inshallah Unless you're going to say we shouldn't talk about it. <laughs> then I'm going to go. <laughs> go ahead, man. Go ahead. Right. And I was going to say, I mean, if you think about our fitrah, our natural disposition, or just let's look at how people lived the last, you know, thousands of years. It was always the men going out, being the go-getters, being the, the breadwinners, whatever. Even if it meant they have to learn something, a skill first, and then go work based off that skill. It was always the men doing this. This is how the world has worked. This is how men and women lived thousands of years and it's something that worked and this is always something that people naturally fell into these gender roles and whatever you want to call it so mm. why would it be any different in this case let the men work let the men learn let the men you know go to school mothers have very women have very important roles that men just can't do like be a mother men cannot be moms men cannot give birth men cannot breastfeed men are not as empathetic as women just literally just based on blood flowing to certain parts of the brain that make women more empathetic. It's a natural thing. And Allah has created very beautifully a woman for, for with very beautiful qualities that a man just does not have as naturally. And same thing with a man. Allah has created men with very beautiful characteristics that women don't have. 
Like, mm -hmm. for example, the 30% extra muscle mass we have. You know, women have wider hips so they can give birth. It makes it harder for them to move and do physical labor. For men, it's easier. So, listen, you can justify or not justify all you want. You can go into the semantics all you want. At the end of the day, if you want to make an argument, make it sound, go to the root, prove whatever you need mm -hmm. to prove. But you guys are not going to be able to prove that, oh, liberalism is just the ideology. This is the same psyoped media propaganda that you saw with Qatar. As soon as they said that we don't want this rainbow nonsense in our sports teams, this is soccer, bro. Forget even these are our values you're disrespecting. The, the, let's keep it at soccer, bro. Let's keep it at football. None of this rainbow stuff. The media ate that up, bro. But the problem that they're saying, which is what Rami's alluding to, is that the West operates in this almost false sense of we have what's correct. We almost presuppose to be objective truth. Says who? Says who? Because you guys didn't even believe what you believe in like 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 20 years ago. And Islam is the only solution that is objectively grounded in morality. Anhel, bro, you, you were going to say something <laughs> earlier. Bro, what are we doing? What are we talking about right now? I feel like this is like the radio talk show right now. Well, I mean, for people on audio, that's maybe exactly what they need. Yeah, that's uh, true. I, know. I never maybe. thought about that. What's, um, so did they cut off all education or is it just like the higher forms of education like college? I think it's college and university just until further notice. Okay, well, I mean, the women are still getting a uh, basic level, even more than that, of knowledge. I mean, university, if you think about it, university is just setting you up for the system. It's setting you up to learn a career path. You know, like, I don't know. Maybe they are doing something different. Maybe they're not. If, if anyone were to take any message from this, I think the most important thing is that you should never just take word of mouth, even if it's like a news article, news organization. You should never just take people's word of mouth. You should never just take whatever people say, um, especially when it's going on abroad and just accept it with open arms because a lot of the time it's propaganda a lot of the time it's not true or it's amplified or just context is taken away like imagine i told you i think i've used this example a few times but imagine i told you um uh so and so pushed an old lady in the street actually let me use a better example uh, this actually happened what i'm telling you now actually happened a woman at walmart an old lady an old lady at walmart would not move from in the middle of the doorway. She was literally just in the middle of the doorway. She wouldn't move. So I pushed her. I swear to God, Wallah al that happened. Well, I did that. I pushed an old lady. She was in the middle of the doorway. Bro, you're probably I... thinking, you're probably thinking, Rami's a disgusting guy. Cancel him. She was in one of those motorized vehicles and there was a crack in the concrete before the door. So the back wheel got stuck and she couldn't move. So I pushed the, the, the thing forward so it could gain traction and she could go. The first version, everyone hates me. The second version is like, oh, okay, that's a nice thing to do. Just because I gave more context. Because a lot of things in isolation sound really bad. So don't just take word of mouth uh, without saying the full story. As Muslims, we're not supposed to do that either, by the way. Allah says it in the Quran. Um, whenever you're given information from like a non-so-trustworthy non source, you're skeptical about them, you need to verify it. Allah says that in the Quran.